Seven is woohoo. Eight is get in. <laughs> Nine is Jesus, that's good. And ten is just wow. Oh, what a way to start the new podcast. Not on. Un- I'm not underwhelmed. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm just well. That's um, so harsh. And we're absolute dog. We're a bit sexier, if you know what I mean. The biggest pulling power. He seems to be. He seems to be able to rustle up some tasty meals. Uh, hello, welcome back to the 1875 podcast. Uh, it's been a good couple of months now. I'm sure you've missed us. Uh, it's all new and improved. The only thing new is uh, Tom's haircut, and in, the only thing improved is the fact that Matt Holden is not here. Um, I'm, only joking about, <laughs> I'm only joking about that last bit, obviously. Um, Matt couldn't make it this week. So we have got uh, Alex with us. He's the first time he's been with me and Tom, so welcome, Alex. Yeah, thanks for having us. <laughs> and uh, welcome back, Tom. Thank you. It's a pleasure as always. Yeah, another season underway. Um, is this? Did we start in two thousand and seven, Tom? Two thousand seven. Uh, oh, definitely no. not. <laughs> Sorry, two thousand and seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. I, would, I think yeah, <laughs> would have been the first one, League One season, first year. Yeah, definitely not two thousand seven. I was ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a way to start the new podcast! Um, right, so we're going to obviously go over Barrow. Um, and then we're going to look at the what's happened so far this summer. Inns, unfortunately, one out, which uh, I had a good cry over at the time. Um, and then we're going to talk about a couple of rumours. And then we'll get on to your questions, which uh, Ian Herbert has uh, bowled as a, a doobie for the end. Um, right, so let's start off with Barrow. Did uh, either of you go to Barrow? I didn't. No, neither. <laughs> um, right, so, what do you think of Charlie Adams from what people have said? That is the, the big thing. Everyone's saying that he had a terrific second half. Um, we'll start with you, Alex. So, should we sign him from what people have said? Uh, I think we've got a few too many midfielders actually already. Um, I think we've got to be looking to maybe offload just for the sake of the wage bill before we sign any more. Um, I have read that Adam did look like the best player on the pitch in the second half particularly and uh, contributed a lot to us dominating the ball. Um, But I think at the minute it wouldn't be a sign I'd be looking to make. I'd keep it as just a keep-fit arrangement that Mowbray's really alluded to in the media, to be honest with you. I think that's my opinion on that one. Yeah. Yeah. People said he ran the park in the in the second half. Have we got to take into consideration, Tom, that it was Barrow and not Manchester oh, def- United? Definitely, <laughs> and that's, that's with the greatest of respect to Barrow. Barrow are a non-league club. Um, so you, you can't look at the fact that Chardon was outstanding against a non-league side and, and think, right, well, he's going to be able to do that against the likes of Leeds United and, and Middlesbrough next season because realistically that's not going to happen. With that being said, I still think he's got a bit about him. And if it was low risk, I'd say, why not? But then, then like we've already alluded to, we have got an abundance of, of central midfielders. If you you look now, there's Smallwood, Evans, Johnson's come in, Travis, um, Downing, who now seems to, to be playing more central. So there's five there. Um yeah, we've we've got a few. Um so it's not not wouldn't be at the top of my list. Um but you know, I wouldn't exactly grumble if we did sign him. It's more a case of how are you gonna fit all how are you gonna keep all these players happy when they're all fighting for one position? People are gonna have to leave. Um but yeah. Well let's uh, look at the goal scorer, uh, John Nuttall. What are your thoughts and hopes for this season for for Joe Alex? Do you think he's gonna maybe get a bit more regular first team time? Um, unfortunately for Joe, I think with the I've I had a look at the squad list actually a couple of days ago, and I didn't actually realise the number of strikers we have, particularly for the formation we play with just the four two three one, or at least that we played that for the past two seasons, and obviously that only requires one striker and then Dak in the behind role in the number 10 role. 
And um, I'm sure we've, I've counted, obviously, we've got Graham, we've got Brereton, who we hope will come good next season. Um, we've got um, Dominic Samuel, we've got Adam Armstrong, um, and, so, and maybe bringing in Gallagher, which we might move on to later on in the show. But um, I think maybe for Joe this season, I think maybe a season out in League One might serve him the best, um, give him a chance to play 35, 40 league games and score a few goals and build his confidence up. I don't realistically see how he can force his way into the first 11 um, against all those players uh, in particular, especially if we're spending a few million pounds on another striker, which does look quite likely at the minute. Um, it, just because it's something we have mentioned, I think, numerous times last season, do you think Nuttall is good enough to be a starter in the Championship? If you want me to be brutally honest, I'll say probably not. Um, and the reason for that is that I don't think he was a standout player in the League One promotion season. I think he contributed well at times, but I think he was maybe a bit too inconsistent and maybe didn't lead the line well enough. For a, a, Like Tom was alluding to earlier um, with Charlie Adam, you know, it's all right scoring a goal against Barrow, a non-league side, but doing it week in, week out against your big six in the championship, you know, stadiums with 40,000 people, you know, 40,000 seated stadiums, it's a different game altogether. And so the view I would take on it is that this year, maybe Lon Nuttall out, see how he does. If he does score 15 goals next year in League One, if we send him out on Lon, then we can maybe consider maybe this time next year whether he can step up to the championship. But in my opinion with the squad as it is currently. I don't see how he can force his way in, really. Well, I hope you're happy. You've just had upset a large group of the Rovers fans who like Nuttall saying he's not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you asked me to be brutally honest, so there you go. <laughs> keeping along the lines of these youth players, Tom, who are you most looking forward to in the, in the pre-season of seeing how they're going to do? Um, I like Butterworth. Um, I like Rankin Costello. I think those two are ones that I'm looking forward to, to seeing in pre-season and, and potentially pushing towards a, a place, you know, at least in the squad next year. Um, especially Rankin Costello, who was ridiculously unlucky with his injury, but I tell you, I like him. Whenever I've seen him, he's been brilliant. Um, I think he's, he's he could be an important player for us especially under 23s next season. Um, I think if he has a full season of football um, there, there's a good chance he could be pushing for a spot in the, the coming years. So, yeah, Costello's definitely one that I'm looking at and and hoping hoping comes good. What about you, Alex? Have you got any uh, favourites in that youth crew? Um I suppose you could almost lump in Chapman and Davenport into that group as well, seeing as though they didn't play a single game last season or only the final game of the season. Yeah. And so I suppose they're still classes under 23s, don't they, just about. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to see how they can contribute a bit more this season. Um, the last game was quite promising, particularly Davenport, I thought, in the second half of the Swansea game, really stepped up. And um, again, it's the final game of the season and there's... Not exactly pressure to get the result, but um, he impressed last pre-season. And so I'm looking to see if he can impress again this pre-season, but stay injury-free and see if he can um, get into the team and make his stamp on the squad. I think that's the one I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I totally agree with the, them two. Um, away from the 23s a little bit, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing Samuel. Um, I'm still full of hope that he... He can maybe come back and and spark that form that he had at the start of League One, but that's uh, something we're going to have to wait and see. Um, so we'll we'll go on to the summer so far. Um, did you expect more business up to now, Tom, than what we've done? Um, yes, I know. It's easy to say we expected a lot because Mowbray spoke um, a, a good game, I suppose. Um, at the back end of last season and especially early on. But it's difficult, you know, Rovers, from what I know, are pretty confident of signing that Adam Meyer who went to um went with his manager. 
um, for his manager. So they were confident with that. That didn't come off. Um, so I don't think it's because they've not been trying. I just think that it's... Look how many teams have done business in the championship. And I don't mean business a little bit. You know, Brentford have done quite a bit, but that's only picked up in the past week or so with uh, obviously signing Raya from us and signing um, Janssen, Pontus Janssen. So there's not been mass amounts of business. I think it, it's important that we look at that and and don't get carried away. There's this big thing about this European scouting network. And yeah, do I wish that we were utilising a thing that Mowbray spoke a lot about more? Of course I do. But, again, it's got to be the right player. Not every single player you buy is going to be a Mopai. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. Not every single player that you get is going to be a, going to be a Pookie. Yeah, I've made this Dark. point before. We we signed... Well, the, I suppose, yeah, you could use, lump Dak <laughs> in the same area. But I'm thinking of, you know, foreign players that you think, well, who are they? Where they come from? And how, how haven't we signed them? Which is something Mowbray himself said. Yeah. You have to look at players that we've done that in the past. Fordy Coiter, Sasha, Sasha Petschi. <laughs> These were players that we saw abroad and were absolute dog. Like, it, this isn't... It's not easy bringing players from abroad in and you have to make sure it's the right one because you don't want to sign Gash like Fordy Coiter again. That's um, so harsh. Yeah, but it's true. I mean, look, listen... Whatever you whatever you want to say about our aspirations this season, at the start, I think fans expect to be pushing for the playoffs. A good chunk of me. I know I do, and I'm a fan that's realistic in looking at thinking it's going to be very tough for us. But I expect and hope that we'll be pushing, even though I know that it's unlikely. So you've got to be careful. You've got to make sure that the players you do buy are the right players and you don't go and just... Smashed. How much are Brentford paying Pontus Janssen? I imagine yeah. it was on a fair bit at um, on a fair bit at Leeds. at Leeds. So it's it's easy to say, oh well, if, if they got him for five million, what's his wages? Forty thousand? I don't know. It probably less than that. But do you see what I'm saying? It's it's not as easy as as just paying for the player up front. You've got yeah. to look at it and make you aren't paying up the odds on wages because if you are, we're going to be in a position where we struggle. It's just thematic development it's not a case of lump it all on one player and hope it comes good because clubs have done that and they struggle now because of it Middlesbrough are having to cut costs because they did that it's important we don't fall into a trap um, but yeah yeah, I think as fans we do tend to forget about wages don't we obviously we see we've, we've paid well, it's so easy much. yeah it's like people people think oh well there's a budget the, the, Mowbray said there's well Mowbray's not said this but Last season, it was thought the budget was around 10 to 15 million. It's not like on FIFA where you have a transfer budget and a wage budget, or like a football manager where you've got a transfer budget and a wage budget. It's all rolled into one. It's, it, it's not a case of we've got 15 million to spend on transfers and then this much to spend on wages over the course of the year. Everything's rolled in, so they need to make sure that they're not only paying on wages and they don't break a wage structure that they got in place because we've done that before on players like Danny Murphy and we've been in trouble for it. So, yeah, that's all I've got to really say on the business is that I'm not having to go at anyone at all because I f- completely get the frustration because um, I'm, I'm right there with you, but I think we're just going to be a bit more patient. I think... Totally- Panic when it gets to a week before the start of the season. <laughs> Panic then. <laughs> I think, and I'll be like, yep, completely. Tony's shown, Andy, that he's not going to break his... Like, I, I'm guessing he has some sort of set ways that he won't go over. He's shown that he won't overpay for people or give them higher wages. So I think that's sometimes where we'll see a bit slower. Uh, but do you think, Alex, that it might have been a bit better if the signings were a bit sexier, if you know what I mean? You know, everyone was a bit uh, disappointed with Downing. It wasn't that big signing that we all hoped for. Do you think if we'd signed like three really good players, we wouldn't have bothered? I think I've seen a lot on Twitter about um, not. Un- I'm not underwhelmed. I'm not overwhelmed. I'm just whelmed. And I think that really sums up the two signings we've made so far. Um, I don't think they've come on poverty wages for a start. So I think what Tom was talking about there in terms of you know you have a set budget and you allocate. You know, you may spend more on wages and less on fees 
and it may look like that might be the route we're going down so far this summer. Um, yeah, I don't really. Um, it's a difficult one because it's it's easy talking about you know let's bring in this player that player, um, but as you said, we thought Ma was in the bag and circumstances change very quickly and he's gone somewhere else and so it's pretty easy to have grand plans about when you're going to bring in this player when you're going to bring in that player um agents you know lo- love to just sell the world to you you know five different clubs and uh, promise the earth and don't deliver you know and that's where you end up you end up with frustrated fans who see all the rumors circulate and and you think it's the fault of the manager or the chief exec or the negotiators and or the players too greedy or this. And I think um, the reality is at the minute that we are probably middle of the road in terms of pulling power f- financial wise for bringing players in. That means that we probably get um, first choice over some clubs in this league, but above other clubs in this league, we, we're not first choice. And so we have to accept that. Uh, and I think that's been the difficult thing this summer. It's been that, yeah, we can talk about the rhetoric of um, European scouting networks and getting your players in early and bedding in a style of play and all that kind of thing. But it's very difficult actually doing it in practice when you're not one of the big fish in the league. Uh, you, you could see the difference when we were in League One, you know, arguably, well, we had the biggest budget in the league and we got our pl- business done early and we got our good business done early. We, I think we brought Dak in uh, late June. So we'd already had him in by now two years ago. And um, I think it's it's just the accepting of the fact that we're not the biggest pulling power in the championship. We have to accept that. I think that's an excellent point, actually, that, that you made about not being the biggest club in the league. And there are plenty of teams above us that if they're going for the same player, not only might they have a bigger budget, they also have a bigger pulling power with the fact that they might be going for playoffs. Um, so yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that's the point that um, Tom was making. Also, that we have aspirations to maybe push for the playoffs. You know, when if you've got Leeds United coming in for a player and you've got Blackburn Rovers coming in for a player, I'm not doing my own club down here, but um, you look at where Leeds finished last season, look where we finished. There's a difference there before you even start considering finances, and so it's very easy to talk about the ideal situation but obviously we know that football is never ideal is it it isn't especially not when you're a a Rovers fan (laughs) Uh, we'll move on to the actual rumours or transfers etc now Uh, I want to start off with Rodwell I think it's gone kind of quiet now Um, he's still yet to sign a deal with anyone I know a couple of weeks ago Morby was still hopeful the deal would go through Tom would you still like Rodwell back uh, things mess us about a little bit. So the opinion that he could do something for us last season, and I think he probably still could. There's undoubted ability there, but I think that he, to a degree, maybe he thinks he's a bit bigger than the club. Um, thinking that, well, I definitely should be starting for Blackburn Rovers. It's up to Jarrabo to come and prove that, show that he, he should start football matches. And whilst he did have some very good games last season, there were also some cases where he was less than stellar. Um, so, Rob Wells, one if he comes in, I'm fine. Yeah, fine. That's brilliant. It's it's more bodies, uh, more bodies that we've got. If he doesn't, you know, I definitely won't be losing any sleep. Are you? Do you? As he messes around too much, Alex, do you think we should cut that deal off, move away from him? Well, I think the telling point was, I think it was in the Telegraph maybe a couple of months ago when the return list was released. And I'm sure Mowbray alluded to the fact that there were deadlines for uh, agreeing new deals in terms of not messing the club around. Well, obviously, he's not kept to that promise with the Rodwell situation because from the latest news, he's in Australia on his jollies while the club is still trying to scramble around for numbers. And so it doesn't exactly look good, does it? Um, I would have to say that being quite harsh, I think we have to maybe cut cut ties at this point because 
we can't have everyone back in for pre-season training and then have a player who's been on holiday, you know, walk in two weeks before the start <laughs> of the season, um, not up to scratch in terms of fitness, not ready to play, not knowing what they've been working on, you know, not really prepared and being and then expecting to, you know, take part on match day. I, I just don't think that would be good for squad morale, you know, if, if you're... Um, a young, say, central defender, and you see that Rodwell's turned up three weeks before the start of the season and he gets into the match day squad, you're going to be a bit upset, aren't you? I think that's only natural. I think it's come to the point where I would probably call quits on it, if I'm being honest. Um, I don't think... I think it smacks of an agent that wants his client to get as much money as he can rather than uh, one in which he maybe wants to play you know, a decent number of games, you know, and the reality is if he wants to carry on getting paid decent money, he needs to find a club and he needs to play a decent number of games at a decent enough level, a decent enough performance level. And yeah. I'm a bit unsure whether we actually found that last season with him. You know, he was inconsistent, I suppose, like more, a lot of the players were. But um, I think with Rod well, I think, it probably has gone a bit too far at this stage. I think we should maybe call quits on it. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Well, someone else that called quits on the Rovers' uh, career for now, maybe, is uh, David Rea. Obviously, he made a, a transfer to Brentford, and I had a, a good old cry for a couple of days while the rumours were going on, and then a massive cry when he actually got sold, because it was... It's quite a favourite of mine. Obviously, a three million, I think it was, and then plus add-ons. Now, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to have like an, a transfer excitement meter from like one to ten. So I know it's a way, and it's not much excitement, but we're going to try it anyway. Tom, give me your excitement at this deal between one to ten. Five. Five. It's just. <laughs> it's just like I'm very much. I was I was a bit disappointed at first, but now I'm pretty much nonplussed. So five is fair because I hope it doesn't show that I'm, I'm well, it doesn't show excitement, but it doesn't show much disappointment, I suppose. So yeah, five. What about you, Alex? I'll go with a three. A three. That's... <laughs> I, I think I, I think I'd probably edge more towards the disappointment side of things. Um, you've you've got to look at the fact that yeah, he maybe made a few one for Sarah's last season, but I don't think there's a young keeper out there that hasn't. I mean, I remember when David De Gea, obviously in some people's eyes, the best keeper in the world, first joined the Premier League as a young lad, you know, the amount of mistakes and unforced errors that he was making. And I just approach it from the point of which player is fully developed at that age. And A... So, A, the age of him, but B, also the financial side. The fact that he may have a lot more development to come also means that we could have missed out on um, a large transfer fee, even if, you know, we didn't, you know, even if we didn't keep him, we needed to maybe keep him maybe two more seasons and see if we could sell him for double, triple, even quadruple the price, what we actually got for him. And so... Yeah, I think there's a big disappointment. I just wonder whether there's a bit more than meets the eye with Mowbray and Raya due to Luke Viola playing the last four games of the season. I thought that was quite strange at the time and I didn't really understand it, but I don't know if anything's gone on behind the scenes that we're not privy to or because there was a lot made of... I think it was it after the Sheffield Wednesday game when Mowbray was quite critical in public about certain players and I think Ray was on the receiving end of that and it caused quite a bit of a storm. I don't know if anything's gone on behind the scenes that's influenced the deal, but I would say definitely disappointed. I think he could have had a couple more seasons to work on, you know, his distribution and, you know, certain, you know, maybe set players and coming for crosses and that type of thing, his aerial ability. I think he's definitely not the finished article yet, but I think he could have been if we'd have given him a bit more time. And so that's the really the angle I approach it from. Do you think it was a good price for uh, the current David Rea? 
For the current David Ray here, I, I don't know. Sorry, Tom. I'm a oh, goodness, button in there. For the current David Ray here, I would say I don't think it's a bad price. When you know, pe- you know, when you look at, I, I know called Carl, all rumor was squashed by Mowbray, but when you're rumored to be looking at a keeper of his caliber for maybe four million pounds, the fact that we got three million for Ray indicates that that is a decent deal. I just think we may live to regret maybe not keeping him a bit longer and getting triple the price for him if he develops. What about you, Tom? I think in general the deal. I think like, like Alex said, you know, the, the deal. The deal itself is a weird one because I think Ad Morbray really wanted to keep him. Then he would have stayed. From from what I've gathered. And I don't know anything at all that's, that, that's made me think this. It's more just how I've looked at it. I think Morbury probably told Ray that there was a chance there was going to be an experienced keeper coming in, someone that's going to give him genuine competition for the number one spot as Morbury looks to to shore up the defence. And I don't think, think Ray knew that there was a chance he wouldn't be number one. At Brentford, he's going into a team where he will be number one. So that's why he's left. I don't think it's there's anything really that I don't think there's been an argument. I think that yeah. But in terms of a fair deal probably yeah. I mean it's easy to forget Ray's only had two full seasons of football. So to get what is it, three, four million pounds with potentially more um with add ons. I don't think that's a terrible deal at all. Um, you can reinvest it in the squad, which is important. Because, um, like we said before about wages and transfers, when you transfer fees there, but also his wages off the books as well. So again, it gives you more room to manoeuvre with that regard. So, yeah, I'm, I'm. I was very frustrated at first, but as I've looked at it more and more, I've thought, you know what there's probably a better goalkeeper out there that we could get for a similar price. It's important we do that, though, because you don't want to get to get to a week before the season and have no goalkeeper because you look desperate, and that's when teams will charge you um, ridiculous money for a goalkeeper. And with the greatest of respect to Luke Violet, I do not want him as the number one. Yeah. Well, that, I think that's what changed my um, my excitement metre rating from like a one to, to maybe a three is when Morbury came out and said, like, Raya pushed it, which made it seem like either he couldn't handle the criticism or he was told that he's going to have to fight for his job and he's gone, right, forget it, I'll leave. Um, that, to me, that's not the right attitude and you don't want that sort of character if you're not willing to fight for your job. I don't necessarily think he's a, he's, he's got, he's a, bad, a bad egg. I just oh, no, think no, I'm not saying he's that far. From but... his own, own perspective and thought, he, he could probably get in to half of the teams in the championship as the number one. And if Mowbray is not... I think Mowbray probably said, I'd be willing to sell you to him. And then Rayo thought, right, right, well, if that's what the manager thinks, then that's what I want to do. I want to leave. It's understandable. It's also easy to forget as well, Ray has been at the club for, what, eight years? Yeah. He's not exactly new to the club. He's He's been there. It's easy to forget he's only done two seasons because he seems to have been the keeper that we've been thinking about as being the number one for ages. Is it weird seeing him in a Brentford shirt? Yeah. Does it sting a little bit? Yeah. But when I really think about it rationally, yeah, it's one of them. It's football. Yeah. Alex, do you think we can replace him in-house, if you know what I mean, with the current keepers? Uh, I think Tom alluded to it just before, didn't he, with Luke Violet? I don't think so, no. I think we definitely need to recruit at least one keeper. I think it has been mentioned that we might even recruit two keepers, which indicates the attitude that Mowbray has towards it. I think the one, a, a big problem I had with the deal, which I didn't mention before, was that as the selling club, we had the power to hold that deal until we'd got a keeper in. And I think that's a big criticism as well of, of Mowbray, that we shouldn't have even entertained any bids for Raya until we'd actually got our own house in order first. And obviously, as a selling club, we have the power. We have the player on a long contract. And I thought that maybe we should have held that deal or stalled the deal 
or at least not allowed him to leave until we'd got our own replacement in. So yeah, I definitely think um, Luke Violet isn't really a 46 game championship goalkeeper. Um, and so I'm almost certain that we will recruit a keeper from outside. And that is a, that is what I would do. And I'd probably go for someone like, it's probably very, very ambitious, but maybe a John Ruddy or a Joe Hart or a Fraser Forster. I mean, they're all, I don't know if they're all available or if they're in our wage bracket, but that's the calibre of experienced keeper that I'd really like us to bring in, whether we can bring in. This is another thing altogether, but definitely we need an external uh, keeper to come in, in my opinion. Have you got any thoughts on that, Tom, of, of who should fill that role? I think the names mentioned, I'd take any of them apart from Hart, Ruddy and Forster, <laughs> would both be recent acquisitions. Um for the time being and are both better than Raya but it's it's obviously limited time that you'd get them yeah uh, on to the next signing or the the first signing we were, we haven't moved off the soul yet um, is Stuart Downing obviously he was the first person to uh, to come through the doors uh, don't forget to check out the stats video that's on the YouTube channel about Stuart Downing if you want to learn more about him um, but obviously he was a free agent and we have touched on this previously um, but Alex what was your rating on the excitement meter when the when this one came through I'll go over five um, <laughs> with this one uh, I think the way I viewed this one was the fact that why is a, a club like Middlesbrough you know a club that like us is uh, hoping to maybe get into the top six next season why are they letting him go and why should he be good enough for us? Uh, and that was the angle I was looking at, that if he, if Middlesbrough thought he was capable of being in a side that was pushing towards that top six, then maybe they would have kept him. I don't know what went on behind the scenes with Pulis and Downing and the style of play and how that all factored into the decision. Uh, and maybe that he wasn't utilising the way he might have wanted to be. Um also, the fact that he might have been friends with Mowbray, I suppose that could have had an influence. Um, so, yeah, I think it was more that it was the first signing and that it was someone that, after Mowbray, you know, spun out some rhetoric about, you know, I think he I think he said something along the lines of, it's like picking up pebbles on the beach and uh, shining them off and making them better. And I just, uh, you know, young players. And when Downing came in as the first signing, it was a bit, it didn't really make much sense to me if I'm if I'm being honest. Um, it wasn't an unexpected one because it was obviously widely reported, wasn't it? Um, but yeah, that that was the way I looked at it. That if Middlesbrough were willing to let him leave, um, then why should we be we you know be spending some of our wedge budget on him? But I suppose every player has his chance to make an impression, and so I'm not writing it off as a good or bad sign at the minute I'm just waiting to see him play and see how he does I mean it's I suppose it's quite promising that he's committed to the club by relocating into the area I thought that was a nice thing to hear today um, so we'll, we'll just see how it goes really with Downing um, I don't know if he'll be a 46 game man um, but like you say we'll just have to see how his fitness holds up I hear he looks after himself well so it's one that really I'd have to evaluate maybe by January and see how he's contributed and how he's performing. Uh, but the initial reaction was probably nonplussed, I would have to say. Nonplussed was, was probably my reaction. Before I pass this on to Tom, I just... Um, I don't know if you've seen the interview with Downing where he says it, he, he was out of the team mainly because of the, the way Middlesbrough played. So it wasn't necessarily that he, he wasn't good enough. It was just mainly, mm. mainly because of the way they played, which is a plus for us that Middlesbrough aren't getting rid of a player that they don't see fit anymore. It may be just that doesn't fit into their scheme. Um, so I think yeah, that... and I did see some. I did see some comments from Middlesbrough fans saying, you know, that's a good signing, or um, you know, I don't think that's a bad signing for you guys. Um, I just um, it, it was. Obviously, there could have been contractual issues going on behind the scenes that we're not privy to and relationships with managers and chairman and, you know, all that goes on without us 
having a f- faintest idea. So it's difficult for me to make an inf- informed comment about whether Borough really w- wanted or were even willing to keep him for those reasons. But that I, th- I think that was the initial thing that came into my mind was, you know, if they were that desperate to keep hold of him, he'd have probably stayed there. I think that was just my initial impression of it. Where were you on the transfer excitement meter, Tom? Seven. Seven? Oh, he was practically yeah. giddy. As you can tell <laughs> from my voice. No, I think that um, at first I was a bit uh, probably similar to, to um, yourselves, you know, looking around the, the five area. But I think that after giving it some thought, I just thought, you know, he brings a bit of experience and and yeah, he's he still has little bits of quality. So hopefully, hopefully he's he's a good one. Yeah. Well, if you've if you've watched the stats show, or if you haven't, go and watch it about Downing. So yeah, we'll move on to the next signing, which was um, Bradley Johnson. I think there was a little bit of a surprise this one. There, I don't remember hearing too much of a buzz, and then it was just bang, we've signed him on it. Yeah, pretty much so, wasn't it? it was it seemed to be done very very fast. There was rumblings of it and then before you knew it it was signed on the dotted line I like the signing though must admit I'm going to jump the gun here and give my um, transfer excitement reading <laughs> just before you ask for it and say I'm going I'm to give this a an 8 you were struggling though because you went pretty high with Downing <laughs> well you see Downing was one that I'm like because 7 is is my base <laughs> Seven is my basic one and then I work down or up. <laughs> Definitely an eight for me. You see, the, th- the thing is, in all seriousness, with Johnson, you know, he's got the quality and he's shown it multiple times. And I think the only reason that people are a little bit eh, with it is because of his age and they're worried that we're going to be signing older players. Um, you can sign older players. Not every single older player is going to be a Danny Murphy and a Dixner too. Do you, you, know do you think I mean? that's but, what's bothers us because we've had a Whittingham, yeah, a that, Murphy, a Tui that, it, we kind of yeah. think that's what's going to happen 100% there's no doubt in my mind that that's one of the reasons that people are so against us you know making these signings because everyone looks at it and think well it's an, just an old journeyman looking for his, his last payday isn't it? it it's easy to think that as well like understand why people do um, and as well as that, people also want us to build for the future. And, you know, bringing in old players doesn't exactly do that. But look, it is what it is. And you've got to be positive. And I like the Johnson sign, I do. It, it's, I think it's low risk. Um, I think he's going to improve the team. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I think my excitement meter was quite low on this because it was... It was it the same day or the day after Raya? So I was pretty like, I think it was the same day actually. Um, I was pretty bummed out about that. So then this came through. I was like, meh, I don't really care. Um, but obviously, check out the stats show on YouTube. I'm going to keep mentioning that all year. Um, I actually did this one. So it's brilliant, of course. Um, so yeah, that's on Bradley Johnson. Again, his stats are pretty good. So it's a good uh, listen, watch. But we've got a bit of a audio clip from Benjamin Margaret, who is um, a Derby fan. I'm sorry if I butchered your last name. I'm awful at pronouncing names or talking. Um, but yeah, there's, here's a little clip from him on um, Bradley Johnson. Hello, my name is Ben from the Once Around Podcast, Derby County Podcast. Uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about Bradley Johnson, what he can bring to a team. Uh, now, Bradley Johnson is a very interesting player because he can be played in a variety of positions. Uh, while he was at Derby, he was mainly played in a very central midfield role, um, occasionally pushing up, but usually dropping slightly deeper, uh, allowing the more attacking players to push up and press. Um, at Norwich, uh, I believe he was played uh, out wide as a left m- midfielder, um, cutting in, uh, but I believe he's best played as in the centre. Um, what he offers, he's a very, very demanding physical presence. 
Uh, it takes a lot to get past him, and if they do, he will chase them down and absolutely ruin them. Uh, he's he's fantastic in the air. Um, both goals he scored uh, for us last season uh, were headers, um, so he's a very, very good aerial threat. He, he also offers uh, a good amount of experience to the team. He's been there, he's seen it all before, he knows what to expect uh, from attacks, and he's just a fantastic member to have in your team. I would have liked to have kept him, honestly, for our uh, 1920 season. Because uh, we're, gonna, I think we're going to try and go up again. Uh, but for you lot, I think he'll do brilliantly. Um, and yeah, I hope you rate him as highly as we did. Right, cheers. Right, so thank you very much for that. We'll move on to to Alex. Where are you on the excitement meter? Eleven. <laughs> I think I'll join Tom on eight. Actually, um, I think he's. Um, it, it is this. I suppose with the general reaction, it is the scarring from the um, initial relegation into the championship and some of the signs we made in that, that summer that really clouds a lot of people's judgment of the signing. Um, I think, if anything, last season we might have suffered from a lack of experience when you consider the number of late goals we conceded away from home, how we let games run away from us and how we let teams get on top of us in the midfield in the away games. You know, I don't think we, you know, we should forget that Bradley Johnson played in the playoff final, you know, a month or two ago. And so, you know, we need to look where we are as a club in the in the championship at the minute. And we've got to understand that for where we are, I actually think it's a very good signing. I, I, I can't really see much wrong with it, you know. I don't see it as we're signing loads of old players. You know, we had one of the youngest teams in the league last year. And statistically, we're always quite high up for giving minutes to young players. And so, if anything, I, I think we suffered from a deficit of experience last year. And so, I'm actually looking forward to see how he maybe plays alongside Travis or a, one of the younger lads and see how they get on. I think it's definitely one I'm optimistic about, to be honest. It's something I forgot to mention, which you just brought up there, uh, about Downing. Um, so I'll ask Tom first. Where do you see Downing and Johnson fitting into the team? I think Johnson will be a starter. I won't be at all surprised if the first game of the season will be Johnson and Travis as in central midfield. Where do you Just see- because I, I th- Downing, I, I, I don't know. Downing, I think, very much going to take Conway's position. Um, there's a chance he can start but I don't think he'll be regular. Um, I think it depends on the opposition. Maybe if you need someone who's going to be a bit better defensively, you bring in down in over Rothwell, for, for <gasps> perhaps. Well, I don't know, but I'm just saying, you know, like, you know um, but you don't know. I think Johnson's definitely more likely to start than Darian, though. Yeah. Are you uh, agreeing with Tom, Alex? Yeah, definitely, I think. I suppose it all depends on the formation that we start the season with, whether we go with the tried and tested 4-2-3-1. And I can't see Downing and Johnson starting in the centre together. Um, I would probably agree with Tom about about Johnson and Travis being the pair on the opening day of the season. I think Downing will probably play a similar role to Conway. And Mowbray did mention it. He did mention him as a bit of a utility player, so it wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility to maybe see him at left back. Now, it's not somewhere I would play him, or I think it might cause a riot if if that did happen. <laughs> but um, uh, Mowbray is known for playing his wingers at full back, so that wouldn't be one I'd totally rule out. That would be crazy. Uh... <laughs> Um, I agree. <laughs> I, I am really, ex- I mean, excited to see these two, um, and I think it'll grow as, as the season gets closer. Uh, another surprise, I think it was more of a surprise than Johnson. Is um, I forgot his first name. Is it Tom White? Am I getting mixed up? Aye, Tom White. Tom White. What a brilliant He's first name. Um, Fantastic. Where, where are you on the the excitement meter, Tom, for your uh, brotherhood? first name <laughs> well I'll say if seven like I said is my 
my um, <laughs> pretty much five scenario. I'll go seven just because I don't know enough about the guy to really comment. You know, he's come from Gate said he's twenty two. He could be good. He could be not so good. There's a reason we signed him. There's someone saying something in him. I think he won Gate to Player of the Year. So he'll have something about him. It's whether or not he's going to be able to make the step up. Yeah. Well, it looks like we actually stole him from someone else for a change rather than it being done to us. Is Who? Um, Never heard of that one. Uh, he was apparently on the way to Carlisle, I think it was. Uh, they were pretty confident that they were going to get him um, from what I've read. And then obviously we've snatched him out of the water. But um, He played for the England seaside, which until yesterday I had no idea what that meaning was. Um, and obviously it's the England team for the conference players, isn't it? Beating. Um, where are you on the meter, Alex? Solid seven. I think, I think me and Tom are operating on different baselines. So, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, sti- I'll, I'll stick, I'll stick, I'll stick with the five that I give Downing. I think it's unfair on Downing if I give the, uh, you know, an unknown conference player a higher rating than him. So I think I'll stick with a five. Yeah. Uh, like Tom, I know nothing about the the player, um, so it's just going to be. An initial link up with the under twenty three side, and maybe I see him a bit as a similar player to maybe Brad Lyons last year that got loaned out to Saint Mirren. Um, so I think a similar thing might happen with him. Um, maybe loaned out to either a Scotland side or a League Two side. See how he gets on. Um, but what I have read about him is that he was obviously the player of the year last year but also was probably one of the standout players in the league. I mean, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? Um, but it's it's like you say, it's it's the three-division gap, isn't it? It's huge. And I've actually watched a bit of League Two football, and the gap between the League Two and the Championship is just unimaginable. But the gap between the Conference and the Championship is even, even greater. So I think it's going to be a case of just giving him time to bed into obviously a professional setup, you know, at the training ground, which will be very different for him. Um, and just seeing how he gets on, really. Yeah. Well, I've watched a bit of um, National League. Um, I did a bit of scouting last season. Um, and, uh, yeah, like you said, the, the quality is not great at times for some of the teams that I've watched. I never watched Gateshead, though. Um yeah, so we'll move on to two players that are reportedly signing, uh, not signing, training with us. Obviously, we've spoke briefly about um, Charlie Adams. Where are you on the meter with Adams, Alex? Uh, <laughs> oh, difficult one. Uh, again, I'll go over five on that one. I'll go over five because he has undoubted quality, and I'm not going to. It's a similar thing to Downing. He has undoubted quality and he has been a great player in his time. Um, I think with Adam, the primary concern is the injury record because um, he's a bit younger than Downing. Um, the, it's whether it would be worth um, shelling out the wages for someone who might only play five games next season and whether we think that's worth it or not. You know, and... It's probably one I would avoid due to our situation with midfielders. I mean, we didn't even mention before that obviously Davenport's only played, is still yet to come in. And we've also got Buckley, a young lad, who's, you know, we've got high hopes for. So it's it's not one I'd be, I'd be sold on, to be honest. Um, do you know much about, is it Jacob Butterfield? You know much about him? I know he, I know he ended up on Bradford's bench last year as they got relegated to League Two. So, if that's an indication of his, should I say, ability, then um, again, that's one I would look to avoid. Again, we've got an over subscription of midfielders in the squad, and I just don't see where he fits into the plans. Um, I just, I, I hope it's a case of him coming in and keeping fit. I think that's the way I look at that one. Where are you on the, uh, the the excitement meter for that one, for the rumour? Butterfield rumour? Yeah. Uh, I'll <laughs> go with... I'll, oh, God. I'll go with a three. 
Oh, three. Right, I'm really interested to see now, Tom, where he's, where he's levelling out at the seven. Um, what, what, what we have for Charlie Adams, Tom? Uh, six. Oh, he's gone below. Butterfield uh, to five. Oh, have you any thoughts on either of them? Would, would you prefer not to sign them, I'm presuming, seeing the below your baseline? Yeah, I'd take Adams, like I said before, mentioned before. I wouldn't say no to him. Wouldn't say Butterfield, as as we already said. You know, he ended up on Bradford's bench last season and they got relegated to League Two. So that really says all you need to know about him. Right. Moving on to something that I think I think this is mixed of who of of, of opinions on this lad. But Sam Gallagher, there's rumours he could be coming back. Where are you on the meter, Tom? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I just I'm I'm so in, I'm in two minds about Gallagher. He was brilliant when he was when we when he was last here, and obviously that was in a poor side with the likes of the Jeff, likes of Jason you know, Law. Um, well, Mar- I was thinking Ernest. more Owen Coyle, but <laughs> the likes of Coyle as the manager, and you know he, he played he played well enough then, but didn't do really much at Birmingham last season he spent the entire time on the bench I just don't know that he's worth 5 million that's my issue you know I, I'm, I hope I'm wrong in everything that I say when I'm criticising someone because it means that they've proven me wrong it means they've played well and you know again I would, I would welcome him back with open arms I would, would by no means be critical but it's just one of them. You don't, you don't want to sign someone that might not be worth the money when you could spend five million elsewhere, and it be worth bit for a better player. Yeah, that's my main thing. I think five million's a lot of money to sign to sign someone that has scored about twenty goals in league football, and he's a striker. Oh well, what a downer Tom's put on. I'm just saying, it's just that it's it's me being realistic. I it, I like the guy, but I I'm just not fully convinced by him. That's all. What about you, Alex? Where are you on the meter? Uh, I'll, I'll go over seven on this one. Um, it's I'm similar to Tom in the sense that yeah, he hasn't got the best goal scoring record, but Rovers did bring the best out of him when he was here on loan. I don't see any reason why under a better manager than we had last time he was here that he couldn't score at the same amount of goals or more. He didn't have Bradley Jack didn't... either last time. No, he didn't. Um, I think the way I've got to look at it is that nowadays, five million, I don't use the uh, you know the chicken feed phrase because that's not <laughs> really appropriate for our club, but um, five million nowadays really doesn't get you a lot, and especially... Uh, in the forward areas of the pitch, you know, when when you're looking at you know Dak being rumored to be worth you know 15, 20 million pounds, is someone that, you know going for five million? Is that actually a lot of money in this day and age? I don't actually think it is. I mean, we paid eight um, million for Rhodes, and he was scoring goals for fun at the time. I know it was in a yeah. lower league, but I mean, the way I look at it is that if if we sign Gallagher for five million pound and he comes in next season and scores fifteen goals, what will he be worth? You know, and would that be a good return on our investment? And I would probably say yes, it would. If if he scores fifteen goals next season, he's going to be worth at least double that. Yeah. And so, I think we've got to maybe look yes at more pressing areas of the pitch to spend the money. But as a standalone signing for five million pound. Maybe a smidgen too expensive, but I I wouldn't think it's a ridiculous fee in this day and age. Well, it, reports are today that our good friends Brentford may be stealing Gallagher from our grasps. From like this has been going on forever. Would you be disappointed, Alex, if it if he turned up tomorrow in Brentford shirt and we'd lost him? I wouldn't be heartbroken. <laughs> <laughs> uh, put it that way. I'd be disappointed, um, especially if that's, you know, I, I see it as the fact that if, if Marbury really wants him, then I'd be disappointed if we didn't get him in, uh, if Marbury's been planning to have him in the squad. Um, 
it wouldn't surprise me if he links up with Brentford. You know, I think he actually is best mates with David Rea, as it happens. Um, so that wouldn't surprise me. Um, I wouldn't be heartbroken, but I would be a tad disappointed that we'd have to maybe change plans and uh, chase after another player. You know, maybe someone from League One or someone of inferior quality. So it wouldn't it wouldn't be ideal if we put all our eggs in one basket with Gallagher, and he then. Um, decides to go elsewhere. I think that's maybe where the disappointment for me would come. Not actually not getting Gallagher in, but maybe the fact that our plans might be disrupted. What about you, Tom? Would you be disappointed if he signed for Brentford tomorrow? A smidge, only because that means a player's thought that Brentford is a better prospect than us. Not necessarily the fact we've missed out on the player. Well, that's a good um, answer. You're offended that because, someone has picked Brentford over your overs. That's good. Well, yeah, because I think that we're, personally, obviously, Brentford have the fact that they're from London, but I would say that, and obviously I'm incredibly biased, but I'd say that Blackburn, <laughs> as a club, is a more attractive prospect than Brentford. That's just my, my albeit biased opinion. Yeah. Uh, I agree with that. Um, I, I Personally, I don't want him back. I don't want to spend £5 million on him, but... Um, on to two other people that might be coming back, but I th- probably hugely unlikely. Um, Grant Hanley, Tom, one to ten. It's... Eight. Eight. Scott Dan. Six. What about you, Alex? Grant Hanley. Uh, Grant Hanley, I'll agree with Tom. I'll go with an eight. Scott... And with Scott Dan, I'll go with a four. A four. It just gives me nightmares of Steve Keen. <laughs> So, you won't, neither do you want Scott down back, obviously, because um, Tom's gone under a seven, which is like May Day Station. Um, it's not like I wouldn't have Dan. It's, it's not, not that I wouldn't have him. It's more that he's now 30-odd. I think he's come back from a big injury, hasn't he, recently? Because he was, he was Crystal Palace's main man for a while at centre-half. Yeah. Then got injured, so I don't know. I just think he's a bit old. Hanley on the other hand, I think he's a well. I personally think he's a quality defender. Right. Well, you've already answered this question, Alex. Who would you prefer? I think it's obvious. Yeah, I don't think think you need to ask me that question, <laughs> uh, uh, Grant Hanley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got quite excited. I, I went up to like a, a nine on Tom's like excitement meter when I heard about Grant Hanley. Um, <laughs> I thought it was cracking the season before he left. Um, the way he can like sprint back for a ball is incredible for such a big guy. Um, but that is, we're moving on to the questions now, but I just want to say all articles on all these players are on the website. There's a white article, uh, Downing, uh, Johnson, God knows what else, everything, because we're just like spewing out articles every day. So get over to roverschat.com. Um, tons of content and obviously subscribe to the YouTube channel which is Rovers Chat uh, you can see all the stats videos and stuff like that um, but we'll move on to the questions and obviously it wouldn't be the uh, the 1875 podcast without a question without um, from Ian Herbert uh, Tom I'll let you answer this because I know you're uh, good friends with Ian and I've have chats quite regularly uh, which Rovers player would you invite to your summer barbecue and which <laughs> I can't even read this without laughing. Which would be most likely to help with the washing up? <laughs> um, I'd invite Bradley Dak because if you see the Lydia Atwood Instagram stories, he seems to be, he seems to be able to rustle up some tasty meals. <laughs> so, you know, I reckon he'd be a mean barbecuer. Um, the issue is, would he wash up? Um, so I think I'd have to invite two um, Dak to cook. And you know, I think who'd be a good washer upper? <laughs> ben Yeah. Ever <laughs> Yeah, Ben would do it. That's a very yeah, Ben would do it. That's a very good answer actually. Because Ben Ben he he is just a genuinely nice guy. He'd feel inclined to wash up because you've invited him to the barbecue. He'd be the one <laughs> who on Christmas Day, when you're the person who's cooked, obviously they've been st- Slaving, slaving. <laughs> they've been there at the stove all day, you know, cooking, and it's always like the the in law 
to I'll come help you wash up. I think that's what Benno would do. He'd feel bad because Daki and myself been there frying burgers and sausages, and Benno would then think, "Aye, I'll come. I'll I'll wash up that dirty grill." And you so, know, it's so versatile. You know, he'll do a cracking job of it as well. A nice fist pump at the end. Yeah, of it. and he could probably cook as well. He could probably cook <laughs> as well if he so wanted to. So yeah. Who's coming to your barbecue, Alex? I think I'm in agreement with Tom there. I think I'll go with Daki and Benno. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to be one of the weirdest ones, to be honest. Um, our very own Matt Holt, who couldn't make it today because he's... Uh, I think he said he's practising to uh, take over Raya or something like that. Um, <laughs> uh, what do you think of Raya's recent departure? We, we've we've talked at length at... Um, uh, who do you think would be the ideal replacement and why? Now, I know we've already mentioned this, but I want you to pick one person. I'll let you go first, Alex. Pick the one person John, you want. Uh, John Roddy, he's, been, he's got Premier League experience. He's won the championship. He's been round the block. He can command the defence. He's a decent shot stopper, John Ruddy. What about you, Tom? Ditto. Ditto. Who's he? Well, see, I was thinking that if there's some listeners that don't perhaps know the saying, I think I'm talking about it. Oh, yes, uh, John Ruddy. I'm in agreement with Alex. You've heard of that Brazilian player, haven't you? (laughs) (laughs) No, yeah, I'm in agreement with Alex. I think Ruddy would be a good replacement. Yeah. Uh, Rock and Roll 85. Um, Can you see us not signing a centre-back and giving the likes of McGlory, Wharton, Grayson uh, a chance alongside Lenny Han? Do you want to take this one, Alex? Then I'll, I'll jump in. If Mowbray wants to give me sleepless nights, <laughs> then yes. If he's got any sense, no. <laughs> um, I think centre-half has to be a priority. I mean, you look at, at what Sheffield United did last year and they spent all their money on a centre-half. I think they brought in Egan from Brentford and they actually brought in McGoldrick up front, so that's where their priorities lay last season. Um I think that has shown to be effective for a club on a tight budget if they want to maybe perform above expectation that that's the route to go down. And so, no, I don't, I don't see us not signing a centre-half, but I'm, I do see us maybe not spending the sum of money that maybe a lot of fans would like us to spend on a centre-half. I think maybe Mowbray might go down a similar route to what I think he will with the goalkeeper. I think he might go down with... Uh, the route of maybe a more experienced head and maybe pay a bit more in wages. What about you, Tom? Uh, yeah, I think we do. We do need another centre half, don't we? Um, Wharton, I know you like him, Lee, but I think he should. He would have broke into the squad by now if he were going to do it all. No, I do, I do agree that it, I think it's probably time for not probably more for him that he needs to start his career. Go somewhere and get his career Yeah, started. definitely. Um, you know, McGloy, like, I'll dig out, I like him. I probably butchered his name. I can never get his name. <laughs> I, I always but, struggle. But... You, know, he, um, you know, I like him as a player, but I don't think he's ready for consistent first-team football. Um, and similar to Grayson, I think that probably start the season with Williams and Lenehan as a centre-half pair. And just because that's what we finished with, and it... it it tri- as well, but then it won't, also wouldn't surprise me if he also drafted Mulgrew, because um, you know how he likes Mulgrew. But I, I hope we do sign a centre half. Um, but uh, wouldn't be surprised if we didn't. But I hope we do. Yeah, um, I'd rather spend five million on a centre back. I think we've said it before. Um, thank you very much for your questions. Um, get them in for the next show. Um, so thank you uh, one last thing before we leave Alex what are you expecting over the next week what What would you like to happen for Rovers obviously in terms of transfers well I think the immediate priority is a goalkeeper so um, goalkeeper definitely um, because obviously we're short at the minute so as far as I'm concerned everything else is on the back burner until we've got a, a goalkeeper in so that's definitely Within the next week, I'd be pretty miffed, is the word, if we didn't have someone through the door. 
yeah, and Tom will be simmering at a nine if that happens. Uh, what are you expecting over the next week, Tom? Um, I think, yeah, like, like Alex said, you know, looking at goalkeeper, um, I th- I'd like to think that within a week we'd have a goalkeeper in. Or at least be close to bringing a goalkeeper in. Yeah, I think we've definitely got to make some strides in the shirt, in the search, as le- at least. Um, we've been talking for over an hour now. I'm starting to lose the ability to speak. Um, but thank you very much for listening to this. It's been a long one. It's the first one. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, thank you, Alex, for coming on. It's been good chatting to you for the first time. Yeah, no problem, Lee. Thanks for having me. And Tom, as always, it's good to chat to you. Not a problem. Enjoyed it. Um, and join us again next time. And we'll try and get Tom onto a like a nine or ten or something, or we might even go to the other way and try to get him to a one or two. I'm still uh, been thinking I might move my um baseline down because <laughs> I felt like maybe I've set myself because an eight seems too high for certain <laughs> players. Um, like. So maybe a six is my new base, and then we'll, we'll work upwards from there. So seven is, woohoo, eight is, get in, <laughs> nine is, Jesus, that's good. And ten is just, wow, wow. But yeah. Yeah, I did feel that. you When at a seven, you were constantly like, you must have been giddy with excitement all the time at seven. Mm. Yeah, seven's just a bit, you know. <laughs> yeah, good. It's good. Well, thank you very much for listening, and uh, we'll see you again next time. Obviously, don't forget to subscribe to this um, podcast, to the Twitter. Uh, I can't remember the bloody. I think it's at 1875 podcast or underscore podcast. Uh, subscribe to at Rovers underscore chat and go to the website roverschat.com. Thank you very much, and uh, see you again next time. <laughs>